Hello friends, I hope everyone is fine. In this video, we will talk about ECG. ECG stands for electrocardiogram. First of all, let's see what is the literal meaning of ECG. The literal meaning of the ECG is when we say electro, it means the electrical activity. Cardio means heart and gram or graph mean a picture. So this is the picture of electrical activity of the heart or you can say the electrical activity of the heart is represented with certain lines on a piece of paper. This is what we call the ECG or electrocardiogram or electrocardiography. Now first of all let's see how many chambers heart has got. Heart has got four uh, chambers. Two are smaller one which we call the uh, atria. These are located on the upper side. Lower to the atria uh, the singular is known as the atrium which is the right atrium and the left atrium and uh, b both of these are known as the atria together now just below the atria there are two ventricles L right ventricle and the left ventricle these are larger chambers as compared to the atria now the atria are separated from the ventricle with the help of the uh, septum which we call the atrioventricular septum and both the atria these are separated from each other with the help of interatrial septum and both the ventricles they are separated from each other with the help of the interventricular septum so when we say that uh, we are going to get the ECG or electrocardiogram which I told is the electrical representation on a paper then what is the electrical activity of the heart for this we need to understand the conduction system of the heart conduction system of the heart is very significant is very very important take example when we switch on a bulb or switch off a bulb then we press the button when we press the button there is an electrical activity going through certain wires and ultimately it goes all the way to the uh, end point which is the bulb in this case so the physical activity uh, is the lightening of the bulb or switching off of the light but the electrical activity is the one which we trigger by pushing the but button on or off and that electrical activity runs through a circuit uh, through the wires so same goes uh, for the heart activity the cardiac electrical activity passes through a certain conduction system and that conduction system starts from the SA node which is the sinoatrial node. This sinoatrial node is located in the right atrium uh, just around or near to the location where superior and inferior vena cava they enter into the uh, right atrium. So this sinoatrial node is automatically triggering. Now the, in the example of lightening of the bulb we had pressed the button but in this case SA node or sinoatrial node is automatically triggering certain impulses uh, around a, at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute which is the uh, normal heart rate and average goes around like 72. So this electrical activity which is uh, produced automatically in the SA node first of all through the Batchman tracts it enters into in both right and left atria and it causes the change in the electrical activity of the muscles of the atria. Normally the muscles of the atria are in the resting uh, state and I'll briefly talk about very briefly talk about it that inside of it is negative and outside is positive when this electrical act activity coming from the SA node strikes the muscles of the atria then it changes the uh, um, status of the atrial muscle in a way that inside becomes positive because of entrance of the sodium uh, ions and outside become negative. So this is known as depolarized state. When the atrial uh, muscles, they get depolarized, they become depolarized. This change in the electrical activity is picked by the ECG or the ECG electrodes or ECG leads as a positive deflection or a negative deflection. So depolarization of the atrial muscle will be denoted on the ECG paper as a positive deflection in the form of the P wave. So look at this P wave. This is a first positive deflection on the ECG paper. So this positive deflection is because of the atrial depolarization which is done by the uh, electrical activity coming all the way from above from the SA node. 
so after the atrial depolarization this very same impulse passes uh, from the atria to the ventricle now there is a point nothing can pass across the septum which is a fibrous tissue which separates the atria from the ventricle except through the conduction system now part of the conduction system which connects the atria with the both ventricles is the av node which we call the atrioventricular node because it's located between the atria and the ventricle now that impulse which had already depolarized atria it now enters the av node now its uh, travel or journey or speed is slowed in the av node this is for a reason which i'll explain later on now that 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 slowing of the impulse from the atria to the ventricle is depicted on the ecg paper as an interval between between the atrial depolarization and the ventricular depolarization this is known as the pr interval which we call the from the start of the p, uh, p wave to the start of the qrs complex so this is known as a pr interval and pr segment is the actual uh, point bit, uh, here so when you uh, when this impulse passes through the av node after that it enters into the bundle of his and just speeds up again from the bundle of his it enters into both the left uh, bundle branch and right bundle branch which are located in both the left and the right it, uh, ventricles now the left bundle branch has got two fascicles one is the anterior fascicle and one is the posterior fascicles at the end of both of these uh, uh, bundle branches right and the left there are certain fibers which we call the purkinje fibers these purkinje fibers these are embedded into the muscles of the ventricles now with the, once this impulse through this conduction system enters into the uh, muscles of the ventricle then it causes the same change as it has caused in the atrial muscles it causes the depolarization of the ventricular muscle which is represented on the paper of the ecg as qrs complex now why we have q for example in the uh, lead uh, v5 v6 we will have a very downward deflection very short downward deflection which we call the q wave and in the lead v1 and v2 we will have a very short initial upward deflection which we call the uh, small r wave now both these q wave in the v5 v6 and r wave small r wave in v1 and v2 they are formed by one electrical event which is the depolarization of the septum which has separated these two ventricles now that septal depolarization it is a very minute event so it is represented on the ecg paper as q wave which is the first downward or initial downward deflection or negative deflection in the v5 v6 and uh, first uh, positive deflection in the v1 v2 that is because of the septal depolarization which moves from the left to the right now after the q wave we have got r wave in lead v5 v6 which is a positive deflection the largest positive deflection or positive wave and we have we uh, a very deep s wave in the v1 and v2 the which is a largest negative deflection now both these waves are formed by one event that is the depolarization of the mass or muscle of the left ventricle which moves from uh, inside to the outside or from endocardium to the epicardium so that generates a tall r wave in v5 and v6 and a very negative or downward deflection of s wave in v1 and v2 why these are positive and negative deflection we will talk uh, after a short while so after making uh, um, qrs complex r q and r comes the last negative deflection which is the s wave now that s wave in lead v5 and v6 which is a very short negative deflection and a very small upward deflection in v1 v2 which we call another r wave uh, will be made by the depolarization of the muscles of the right ventricle now this this is the last event of the depolarization and after the muscles have been depolarized then starts the process of the repolarization in the repolarization this electrical activity now it 
moves from the epicardium which is the outermost part of the heart towards the inside of the heart which is the endocardium and that will be shown on the ecg paper the ventricular repolarization will be shown on the ecg paper as the last positive deflection which we call the t wave because the atrial depolarization is such a minute event and it is happening right at the time when there is depolarization of the ventricular left ventricular muscle that is buried somewhere and it is not uh, represented on the ecg paper but the repolarization of the ventricular muscle is represented on the ecg paper as a t wave so here you see that the electrical activity is happening in the muscles of the heart in the both atria and the ventricle and its representation is done on the ecg paper with the help of some positive deflection and some negative deflection why we have got positive deflection and why we have got a negative deflection look this is the positive deflection and this one is the negative deflection we'll talk about the leads but bef uh, before that i'll tell you one thing which you will recall when i'm talking about the leads when this wave of depolarization is moving towards a particular electrode or lead that electrode or lead will be uh, noting this electrical activity as a positive deflection and when the wave of depolarization is moving away from the uh, uh, electrode or ecg lead that will be represented on the ecg paper as a negative deflection this is the one of the most important concept of understanding the ecg okay now bef uh, before we go on to talk about the ecg leads let's talk about the ecg paper itself now this ecg paper has got certain lines there are two types of the lines one are the thin lines and one are the thick lines then because of these thin and thick lines there are some small boxes and large boxes now these small boxes and large boxes are very important in the context of understanding the ecg there are certain set parameters for the machine which is the ecg machine uh, what are those set parameters the speed with which this paper will come out of the ecg machine is a standard one which is the 25 millimeter per second how we know the 25 millimeter and how we know the one second now look at these small and large boxes on the x axis the duration of the small box is 0 0.04 second and the duration of the one large box is 0 0.20 second and five large boxes will be equal to one second now on the same horizontal x axis the width of these one small box is one millimeter and width of the one large box is five millimeter and the width of the five large boxes is 25 millimeter so when you press the ecg button uh, you 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 just put it on uh, mode and the paper is coming out of it then in one second 25 millimeter should come out that means five large boxes should come out in one second this is a standard speed obviously we can modify it for certain situation which we may talk in future but this is the standard speed now there is another standard which is the voltage what is that that voltage should be 10 millimeter per millivolt now look at the y axis of the or vertical axis of the small and large boxes height of one small box is one millimeter height of 10 small box or two large boxes is 10 millimeter now the voltage which creates this much height which we require in this ecg machine is 0.1 millivolt will create a height of one small box and height of the one lar two large boxes which is 10 millimeter is possible when there is a voltage of one millivolt so this is again the standard sensitivity of the ecg machine and in some ecg paper you have got this bar which represents both of these things the standard uh, height achieved with the help of the voltage and the uh, speed so these are these are written on the ecg paper you can find out by looking at the ecg paper that there is a standard speed set and there is a standard sensitivity set 
in 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 form of the 10 millimeter per millivolt you always need to look at the name of the patient the identification number of the patient date on which it was done this is very important these are very basic things about the ecg paper so once you have known a little bit about the ecg paper let's move towards the uh, leads of the ECG uh, machine and the ECG paper, how we get the uh, ECG uh, on the paper with the help of certain electrodes and leads which we place on the uh, patient. This is known as the 12 lead ECG. We have got 10 physical leads or electrodes which we apply on the patient and two are the virtual one. So first let's talk about the uh, limb leads. There are six, uh, four limb leads which we place on the patient. And in order to remember these four limb leads, better you uh, uh, remember a mnemonic which we call the read your good books. Read your good books. Let's take the initial alphabet of all of these. Read R. This is the red uh, lead, a red electrode which we place on the right arm. We can place it on the shoulder, but we prefer to place it on the wrist of the right arm because it has got less muscle mass then read your why the yellow color is placed on the left wrist read your good green it is placed on the left leg on the ankle it can be placed on the thigh or anywhere along the leg but because of the less muscle mass on the ankle we place it there and lastly read your good book b is for black the black colored electrode is placed on the right ankle and this one acts as a earthening uh, purpose so it is it is not involved in in making these uh, representation on the paper so there are three effective limb leads one placed on the right wrist one on the left wrist and one on the left ankle these are known as bipolar or dipole leads these have got two poles, one is positive and one is negative. These are also known as one, two and three limb leads. Now lead one is present between, it takes signals or it looks at the electrical activity of the heart between two poles. Its positive pole is located on the left shoulder and its negative pole is located on the right shoulder. Lead two reads the signal from the heart between positive pole on the left leg and negative pole on the right shoulder. Lead 3 is looking at the electrical signals in between positive pole on the left leg and negative pole on the left shoulder. So these are the bipolar or dipole limb leads which look at the heart in the frontal plane. Now there are three augmented limb leads. These are unipolar limb leads because they have only one positive pole and the negative pole is located in the center which is the hard, hard position. Now AVR or augmented voltage right is located on the right shoulder and augmented voltage left AVL is located on the left shoulder and AVF augmented voltage foot is located on the left foot. So these are three unipolar limb leads. These are three virtual limb leads. Now in total they make six limb leads. When the electrical activity is going away from a particular lead, this is known as the negative lead. For example, AVR is a completely negative lead because heart activity is going away from it because the cardiac axis is located in the 60 degree between minus 30 and plus 90. So AVR is looking at this electrical activity going away from it. So that is why AVR is always negative. Now lead 2 is located at a position exactly at around like 60 degree. It is looking at the electrical activity coming right in front of it, towards it. So it is a purely positive deflect, positively deflected lead. AVL is located at a minus 30. It is looking at the electrical activity coming towards it and going away from it. It is located at a 90 angle to the cardiac axis. 
so it has got a positive deflection as much as the negative deflection and this will be known as the isoelectric leads it lead 3 is a positively deflected lead lead avf is a positively deflected lead but the purely negative deflected limb lead is the avr so that should give you an idea why we have got these positive and negative deflection why some some markings are going up and mar some markings are going down so this is the reason so uh, after the limb leads let's talk about the chest leads there are six chest leads starting from v1 all the way going up till the v6 now uh, let me uh, tell you one thing that the all six limb leads they look at the cardiac activity in the frontal plane in the three dimensions so the then we talk about the chest leads F first of all let's talk about the positioning of the electrodes or the leads in the chest lead v1 is placed on the chest by locate the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the sternum now sternum is this bone how we are to locate uh, intercostal space 4 first of all this is the suprasternal notch this one is the suprasternal notch if we slide our fingers a little lower there is a ridge it's a bony impression then you should come just lateral to it on the right side this is the second intercostal space come down it's the third intercostal space and lower to the third is obviously the fourth intercostal space on the right side of the sternum here we place the first uh, chest lead second chest lead is placed in the same fourth intercostal space but on the left side of the sternum in the left parasternal area we place the uh, second chest leads then down to the uh, second chest lead we need to place the third chest lead but we do not do it before placing the third chest lead we place the fourth chest lead and then we will place the third in between the second and the fourth where we place the fourth chest lead now look this is your clavicle we first look at the mid, mid part of the clavicle then we draw a line lower on the lower side and where it bisects the fifth intercostal space which is on the lower side of the fourth intercostal space on the left side of the sternum this is exactly the position where we are supposed to place the fourth intercostal space please do not use the anatomical landmark of the nipple because it, in female it will make you a lot of problem and it is variable even in male so you place the fourth intercostal uh, fourth uh, chest lead in the uh, fifth intercostal space on the left side in the mid clavicular line and in between the lead chest lead 2 and chest lead 4 you place the chest lead 3 now in order to place the chest lead 5 you need to locate another anatomical landmark which is the anterior axillary line this is our axilla and anterior to it there is a skin fold which we call the anterior axillary line here we place in the fifth intercostal space on obviously the left side we place the uh, fifth chest lead now the c6 or the ch uh, chest uh, lead 6 is placed in the mid axillary line this is axilla it's uh, if you uh, locate the middle of the axilla this will be the mid axillary line here you place the uh, sixth uh, chest lead so the chest leads they are placed starting from the right side of the chest right side of the chest and going all the way from the front to the left side of the chest now chest lead one and two they are placed uh, in a way on the right ventricle chest lead three and four they are looking at the septum which is dividing the two ventricles chest lead five and six they are looking at the mass of the left ventricle this is very important to remember now the wave of depolarization was moving this way towards the left side in a 60 degree angle now look at this circle if we divide it in four compartments this is 0 to plus 90 this compartment is plus 90 to plus 180 and this compartment is uh, 0 to minus 90 and this one is minus 90 to minus 180 
So it's a 360 which we have divided in two halves, positive and negative. Heart is located here. And the wave of depolarization is moving in this direction. Now, if you tell, if, if, you, if I just tell you where the limb leads are located, lead 1 is located at 0 degree, AVL is located at minus 30, AVF is located on positive 90, lead 2 is located as positive 30, 60, lead AVR is located at minus 120, and lead AV, AVF was located as positive 90 and uh, lead 3 is located at uh, positive 120. And the wave of depolarization is moving in this direction. So now again think of the chest leads being placed on the heart. Then you will see that if you have placed the chest leads on the chest and the heart, then the wave of depolarization is moving exactly towards V5 and V6. So they'll have a positive deflection. And wave of depolarization is going away from the V1 and V2. So they will have a negative deflection. And the lead V3 and V4, they are looking at the wave of depolarization coming towards them and then going away from it. Are at 90 degree, they are looking at this electrical activity at 90 degree to its traveling. So they will be positive and negative which we call the isoelectric leads. And uh, as I already told you, the first positive uh, depolarization, the first depolarization which happens in the ventricle is that of the interventricular septum and it moves from the left towards the right. So in lead V1 and V2, the initial first positive deflection which we call a small R wave is because of that septal depolarization going towards V1 and V2. But at the same time, that wave of depolarization will be going away from V5 and V6 and in them it will generate a negative initial downward deflection which we call the uh, Q wave or the physiological Q wave. So chest leads are looking at the on the uh, towards the heart in a transverse plane and the limb leads they are looking at the heart in a frontal plane and in total they will make 12 lead ecg because including the virtual leads we have now got the 12 lead which are representing the electrical activity of the heart on the paper of the ecg in part 2 i'll explain further this ecg process thank you so much for watching the video